what's your word for the year? Here's mine and how I got there. So being more of a more is more kind of gal, the thought of actually having to pinpoint one puny, measly word to an invoke an entire feeling or goal or aspiration for a year felt like too much pressure for myself. But given that my overall goal in general is scintillating simplicity, I can't ever bypass a juicy alliteration, I figured this year I would give it a shot. I took a really interesting goal setting workshop on January 1st. Yes, while most people hang out with family, binge on Netflix or nurse a hangover, I take a five and a half hour goal setting workshop on New Year's Day. Thank you very much. The joy of being a Virgo personal growth junkie. Well, one exercise which was particularly interesting was to look over each month in 2022 and write down not only what you did, but also any images or themes or feelings that got evoked during that month. And then take a moment to look over the whole year and to look at the images, the themes, the feelings, the accomplishments. And when I did that, what I found was like most of us, I'm really hard on myself and actually accomplished way more than I realized or was giving myself credit for. As a motivational resiliency and mindfulness speaker in New York City, I had created way more new programs than I realized. Traveled a lot for the work. I got advanced certifications as well as really some nice friend and family time, traveled for work and leisure, and made some notable upgrades on my home. On paper, it was a very productive year, one that I'm really happy and really grateful about. But when I sat with the theme and overall feeling of 2022, the word that came up for me was striving. Not good, not bad, just a word. But it was a feeling of a way of showing up that I didn't know if I really wanted to continue this year. And when I sat with what striving really feels like, the efforting, the moving forward, the answer was a resounding no. Striving brought images of mental exertion, effort, pressure. And yet I looked at what my goals are for 2023, and I realized the list is even longer than last year. I didn't necessarily want to give up any of these goals because they were all meaningful to me. But what really needed to change, I realized, was the engine, the fuel that was moving me forward. I call it my doing and being goal. That needed to change. I wasn't interested in prior sexier, high energy years, words like unstoppable, passion, excellence, enthusiasm. While they really inspired me in the past, my body flooded with like a low grade exhaustion, just thinking about it. So I did some word shopping and what emerged was alignment. And when I said the word alignment, especially closing my eyes and in my body, I felt a calmness and a focus come over me. Alignment, alignment with my most authentic and alive self with spirit, with source, what I wanted to bring to my life and to the world. I was really inspired by alignment. It had a quiet power to it that centered versus exhausted me. So I asked myself, well, what two to three questions will I ask myself on a regular basis to assure that my actions and how I am showing up are in alignment with my higher self? And a few came up really simply. Is this aligned with how I want to show up in the world? Is this aligned with what I want to accomplish? Is this aligned with how I feel my best self? A few questions. The next day I got an offer for a particular project. The person couldn't have been more complimentary about my skill set, expertise. I was flattered. And the project initially sounded really interesting. But when I read further, there were two things that jumped out that immediately revealed that they were not in alignment with what I wanted to do. I stopped 
breathe, breathing is always important, and ask myself, is this in alignment with what I wanted to create in 2023? The answer was a resounding no. While most decisions aren't always that easy peasy, I realize that when we really know what our word, our theme, our focus, be it a one simple word, a catchphrase, it makes it so much easier to clarify where we do and don't need to be putting our energy into it. I wrote them a brief but very gracious thanks but no thanks and went on with my day. So to summarize the seven sassy steps towards discovering your word or phrase for 2023, here goes. Number one, review last year, 2022. Really take your time looking through your calendar, the parts of your journal, wherever you record your schedule and milestones. Number two, write down month by month accomplishments, challenges, victories, themes, feelings, images, or whatever speaks to you. Three, take a moment, close your eyes, and think of a word or phrase which encompasses the essence of 2022. Now, if you've already written your 2022 word, did it sync up? Or was it a little different? Number four, congratulate yourself for getting through it. These days are filled with challenges for all of us. Five, trust whatever word or phrase came up. Six, ask yourself if that's a theme or energy that you'd like to bring into 2023. If so, great, keep it. If not, Look at your year, or what I do is I like to look at my three-month goals. They feel more real and more accessible and less daunting. And ask yourself what you want to create and how you want to show up. I call it the doing and being aspiration. Not just what you're doing, but how you want to be being. What's a word or phrase you're wanting to step into in 2023? Seven, come up with a phrase or question or prompt you can ask yourself regularly to clarify if you're on or off track from that theme. You could post that word somewhere or make a collage, a PowerPoint slide with the essence of that word and surrounding images and revisit it regularly. It's not about perfection. It's about embodying that. Feel free to comment below or send me an email or share your word or phrase for 2023. And if you're open to it, how it evolved. I'd love to know. And if you're looking for ways to really step into that word or phrase and could use some support and coaching could help get you there, feel free to book a discovery call and we'll make that happen. My name is Lois Barth. Thanks for tuning in and not tuning out because what the world needs are people who are truly tuned in. Bye-bye.